Not so I can see what my friends wear in the church or how nice the house has been cleaned No, But I come to the house of the Lord to see Jesus. I came here for one purpose and one purpose only. And that was to lift up the name of Jesus. So maybe for just a little while, I can forget about my problems. I can put my worries aside. My pain can go away for a little while. So I can be in the presence of God. Jesus before the world began. 
Would you mind putting your Bible down and lift your hands? Let's pray for the word of the Lord this afternoon. That the Lord would anoint his word today to, for our hearts and our ears to hear today. God, we love you. Father, we worship you in this place today, mighty God. We've come to give you praise. We've come to give you glory, God. We've come to give you honor, Lord Jesus. We've come to magnify you, mighty God. We've come to give you glory, Lord. We've come to worship you. Come on, let's lift our hands and worship Jesus. Come on, somebody lift your hands, lift your voice to Jesus in this place. God, we love you. Come on, somebody lift your voice to him in this place. We worship you, mighty God. Lord, we love you. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Come on, he's worthy to be praised.
just a simple shout. Just lift your voice however you wanted to, however you could. Friend, I remember that night like it was yesterday. When those young people in that arena began to lift their voice, it felt like, Pastor, that the roof was going to come off the place. There, the noise that those young people began to make was just simply lifting up the name of Jesus. That night, my daughter almost received the baptism of the Holy Ghost simply because somebody was willing to lift up the name of Jesus. Friend, we must let the sound, those things which are holy, righteous, and good, resound or make an echo in this dark world that we live in, right. friend. We need to be the church that's willing to stand up and say, in spite of everything that's going on around me, in spite of all my difficulties, in spite of the fact that I may not have a job, I may not have enough groceries in the refrigerator, but friend, I deserve a God that if I will stand for him, he will.
We need to know who God is. We need to be able to hear the voice of the Lord. We need to be able to distinguish the voice of the Lord. I want to give you an example. Hit it, buddy. that much noise in your life every day. May not necessarily be the beat of a drum, but there's noise in your life. Yeah. There are things in your life that want to distract you from what God has to say. <laughs> and if we were not and if we are not careful, we will let the noise of our life not be or, or overshadow the voice of the Lord that's trying to speak to us, friend. I believe with all of my heart, all God has been trying to do in 2020 is speak to his people. Right. If we will stop, yeah. oh, come on, somebody. If we will simply take a stand for what we believe, and we will push us out everything else, and we will come to an understanding that I'm going to listen to the voice of the Lord. I'm going to stand for what I know is true.
doesn't matter what you believe, it only matters who you believe in. Friend, I love Jesus with everything I've got. I love church. I love coming to church. Ask my family. I love being in the presence of the Lord. But I don't want to be here just because he's here. I want to be here because I'm going to hear something that's going to change me, that's going to move me, that's going to motivate me, that's going to cause me to say, hmm, I need to let somebody else know what Jesus is doing. I don't want to be in style. I don't want to be the church of status quo. I don't want to have a multi-million dollar building, the most beautiful thing you can have in the world. Friend, I, I have church outside and just under the sun. Amen. If, if I had to. Amen. Buildings are nice. Air conditioning is great. Amen. That's all wonderful. Amen. But God didn't call us to have a church building. Amen. God called us to win the loss. Amen. At any cost. Yeah. My wife and I were discussing a couple things, I think, last night or the night before. We were kind of talking about this whole subject of, of church and buildings and all this kind of stuff. And this year has kind of pushed us to somewhere we've never been before. Yeah. Y'all experienced it when you first got started. I wasn't here then. Have a church in your homes. I don't really recall ever doing that. And I, I've been going to church my entire life. But we had to do it this year. And friend, I'm here to let you know. That God's moving. Yeah. We've reached some people simply because of small groups. Yeah. Doug and Tammy, raise your hand. Those, those two individuals right there. Sister Dawn invited them to come be a part of our small group. Yeah. The one that my wife and I run. And they've been a part of it. And they started coming last Sunday. And I believe they're going to be sitting there every week. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God's given us an opportunity. And if we will possess what he has given us, I promise you, friend, it will not return void. Yeah. Amen. You see, his proponents would have us to believe that the greatest accomplishments of Christianity in the last 30 years has been the demolition of doctrinal distinctive in, in favor of unity. Everyone just believed the same thing. I want to be very careful how I say this. So I'll probably just say this. I want to believe what's right here. Yeah. Not what some man has to say. Right. I want to know what's right here. Right. What I'm believing in. Yeah. What God's telling me through his word. Right. Amen. His word was inspired. Amen. And written by men through inspiration of the Holy Ghost. I want to know what the Bible says. Not what somebody else has to say, but what the Bible says. Amen? Yeah. Friend, if we want revival, we have to be sound in what we believe. With sound doctrine comes apostolic authority and apostolic anointing. Friend, people are not looking for a watered-down message trying to make them feel better. People are looking for something that will change them. This world is not looking for a fix, friend. They are looking for a change. They can get a fix down at the local corner. Yeah. But what they really, really want is a change. Yeah. They want something that's going to cause them to feel a whole lot better for a long time. Yeah. Not just for a few minutes or a couple of hours. People are looking for something that will change them, that will cause them to be different, that they won't have to live in the same circumstances uh. that they are continuing to live in. Amen. Sound faith. Like I don't talk about that enough. <laughs> Say, well, what is faith? In case you're wondering. Well, Webster's Dictionary tells us a firm belief in something for which there is no proof, complete confidence. The Word of God tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, what faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's Christmas. 
And I'm going to be really careful because there's a lot of kids in the house. <laughs> Big kids, too. children to give their parents a list of what they want for Christmas. That's now faith. Because they ain't got a clue whether they're getting it or not. But come Christmas morning, now we're different in our house. We're not real traditional. Stuff gets put under there and gets wrapped. Which usually means Christmas Eve. <laughs> but those kids have that kind of faith. If they give that list to their mom and dad and they got hope and they got faith that everything on the list, all 100 items, <laughs> is going to be under that tree. Yeah. Now, how many of you have been disappointed? Yeah? All of us have when it comes to that. I'm 40 years old. I still get disappointed in Christmas. My wife, my wife's all the time yelling at me. She's like, you like Christmas too much. I love Christmas, and it's not about what I can get. It's about what I can give others. Yeah, yeah. My dad instilled that in me a long time ago. It's about what we can give somebody. Yeah. But to be sound in faith means that our faith is unaltered. Consistency is what you believe is important. Friend, your faith has to be consistent. Yeah. Our faith cannot be down here. And I know this is old hat, but when there ain't no money in the bank and there ain't no groceries in the cabinet. But then when we got a little extra hundred dollars in the bank, Pastor, and we got plenty of meat and vegetables and tea and soda and all that kind of stuff in the fridge, our faith's up here. Yeah. Friend, we have to be consistent in our faith. Right. That no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, no matter the trial, no matter the tribulation, no matter the mountain, no matter the valley, it doesn't matter where we are, what we're going through, what we're facing, who we're dealing with, friend, what it matters is, is are we faithful in everything that we're doing? Right. Is there, quote, unquote, a plane of faith that is stretched out across where we're going and saying, I'm going to be faithful no matter what happens in my life. It don't matter if i got money in the bank or groceries in the or gas in the car. Friend, it doesn't matter if I've got COVID or not. God is still able to do exceeding and abundantly of all that we can ask for. This may be a little tough to swallow here, but our actions will reveal the directions of our thoughts. All you guests that are here today, those that are members of New Life. I watched the pastors watch them. Come walking in here one Sunday. Man, you on cloud nine. And somewhere between Monday and Saturday, Sister Sue, they lost their faith. I got a brand new truck set out there, Bill Davenport. And some goofball hit it the other day. The other week. Drove off. Don't know when and where it happened. My wife comes to me, because she saw me supporting the driveway. She comes to me, she's like, man, somebody needs a truck. I agree, okay. So I go out there and look at it, come back in the house, and whatever, you know. She's, brand new truck, I thought you'd be upset. Yeah, it's just a truck. I'm not going to let the fact that somebody scratched the side of my truck, and I can cover it with my insurance, and they're going to fix it. I gotta drop it off Monday and they're gonna fix it the whole nine yards. I'm not gonna let the fact that somebody scratched the side of my truck get me down. Yeah. There are such small things in our life that wanna take our faith away from us. Yeah. The devil is a liar, friend. Yeah. I'm not gonna let any and everything just get me down. Yeah. I'm not gonna be disappointed because God has not answered my prayer and God has not come through for me in some certain situation. I'm not going to let that bring me down, friend. It doesn't matter really what comes my way, friend. I'm going to stand on the word of God and know that he's still faithful and true and he will come through somewhere. Why? Because the Bible lets me know that he's an all top God. And that he is just and faithful to us. I preached to 
was, I think it was the last Sunday we had church. I think maybe the second one, I forget. And then we had to shut down. We couldn't have service in here anymore. But I preached about faith. But I talked to us about the word fear. And I took the word fear and made an acronym out of it. False evidence appearing real. The enemy, friend, wants to place in front of you evidence that is not real. When, when forensic scientists walk upon a crime scene, they look for evidence to provide a witness. They look for evidence of what took place. If it's a shooting, if whatever the case may be. If it's a shooting, they want to find shell casings. They want to find all kinds of different things. They want to find gunshot residue, all of this kind of stuff. They want to find evidence to provide material evidence so they can present to the prosecutor and say, hey, here's our evidence. This is our suspect. We feel it's going to stick. For I'm here to tell somebody today, the enemy is trying to reveal evidence to you that is not real, right. that is not true, that is not going to stand in on judgment day, friend, in front of God and his angels. I'm here to let somebody know you need to have faith in what you're dealing with. You need to have sound faith, friend. Faith that is healthy. Faith that is stable. Faith that is true. Faith that will endure until the end. Friend, faith doesn't mean pretending that obstacles do not exist. It means realizing that God is in control regardless of obstacles. Romans 12, 2 tells us this. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is, that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to encourage somebody today, you need to have sound faith. Yeah. As important as sound faith, sound doctrine and sound faith is, we need to have a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I want to let somebody know today. Everybody look up here at me, please. Hear me. Everybody in this place. Most of you I know. There's several of you in here that I've never met. But there are several somebodies in this place today that you need a sound mind. Yeah. Because there are voices that are speaking to you. There are voices that you are letting talk to you that do not have a place in your life. Right. Hear, hear me, somebody. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost in that. That you are letting things speak to you that are not biblical. But you have swallowed them as though they are. I'm here to let somebody know. I'm not saying that you're believing false doctrine, but you have believed some things that are not that are false. And you have believed them. And if you're not careful, you're going to step into a realm that you are going to struggle to get back from. Because it is going to take you places that you did not intend to go. It is going to take you places that you don't want to go. That you have no business being a part of. Those individuals and those voices do not belong in your life. But today, just as in Timothy's day, when Paul was speaking to him, fear is a driving force in our world today. Fear inspires the news headlines motivates advertising campaigns, and stirs up social media frenzies. The reason why toilet paper and paper towels disappeared <laughs> off our shelf was because of fear. Fear. That we weren't going to be able to find toilet paper and paper towels. And I'll leave it at that. Y'all are laughing because you know what I was going to say. <laughs> Fear is one of Satan's favorite devices to confuse our minds. So 
Somebody look at your neighbor and tell them that confusion is of the devil. Yeah. God is not confusing the soul, friend. The word of God is not confusing. You have to read it with an open heart and an open mind and know that it is true. Friend, this word right here that's under my hand, and I got several more of these Bibles at home, has not one time, Brother Davenport, failed me yet. Some of you elders out of here today that's been living for God almost your whole life, you can stand and testify that there ain't one time that God failed you. When you reached for him, he was always there. We may not always been where we needed to, but he was always there. He wants to confuse our minds, cause irrational thoughts, misunderstandings, and derail us from the will of God. For this reason, the word of God encourages us to cultivate a healthy, renewed mind that can process right thinking based on God's truth. Romans 12, 2 tells us, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God.
But this wasn't the drummer's most important or most difficult job. You see, in the battle there was noise and confusion because there was yelling and screaming, rifles being discharged, orders being yelled out. So each other was given a series of drum beats to represent each order that would be given in the battle. Both soldiers and drummers had to learn which drum roll meant meet here, which meant attack or retreat, and all other commands of battlefield and camp. But the most exciting drum, crawl, drum roll was the long roll, which was the signal to attack. The drummer would just beat and beat and beat and beat and beat. And every drummer in the distance would hear it, and it would just follow down the line until everyone heard the overwhelming thunder of the army pushing forward. For sometimes in this chaotic, chaotic world, we struggle to hear that still, small voice directing us. The battle's raging around you. But friend, if you will get your ear tuned, to that resounding drumbeat of that which is good, that which is right, and that which can change the course of our lives forever is thundering in the background. It is here today echoing in our hearts and our minds, calling us to an 